fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi yo silver, the Lone Ranger. stagecoach lines in the western United States faced many difficulties. The rough country, the poorly marked trails, the danger of attacks by hostile Indians and outlaws might have forced many of them out of business. But the masked rider of the plains knew the West could not progress without a regular system of transportation. He protected the stagecoaches from attack, solved their other difficulties, and thus made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now those thrilling days of yesteryear, when adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading west to San Police! Hello, Silver! Away! Two plunging, swaying stages drawn by foam-flecked teams urged to their utmost speed by madly shouting drivers, raced side by side on the trail to San Felice. Get going on! Come on, Betty! Here you go, Betty! All right, let's go, Martha! Get going there! <laughs> Come on, there! Get going there! The two coaches careened around curves, dashed recklessly the length of straightaways, seemed more than once on the edge of disaster when wheels approached dangerously close and threatened to lock. San Felice itself came in sight, and still there was no slackening of pace. The town's main street was at one moment busy, and at the next, when the people had seen the coaches thundering toward them, as deserted as the main street of a ghost town. The coaches did not pause. Raising clouds of dust, they raced side by side through the narrow street until they had reached the very center of town. And then... Rick beat the Red Star stage by near a length. You're crazy, the Red Star won. Crazy, Goose? There'll be a wreck one of these days. Say, who's the girl in the Red Star stage? Mm, she's mighty pretty. She's got some female with her. Hey, here they come. Look, mad enough to chaw a hornet. You there, you. <coughs> Uh, who, me? Yes, you. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You you might have killed him. <laughs> now, miss, you wasn't riding my stage. Why blame me? You deliberately challenged our driver to a race. <laughs> he didn't need much urging, I'd say. Oh, Joan, honey, that awful, awful ride. I declare I got such an ache, I won't never get over it. Oh, oh. dear. You did this. What's your name? Rick Leonard, miss. What's yours? Don't be impertinent. I'm reporting you to your employer. <laughs> I am, and you need to laugh about it. Shucks, miss, I ain't got no boss. Don't be silly. Of course you have. Nope. Read what it says there in the side of my stage. The Leonard line. Well, miss, that's me. Oh, why? Why, Joan, he's the man Mr. Madsen's been writing you about. Well, Madsen's been writing you folks about me? I... Say, you ain't Joan Adams, are you? I am. Alex Neese? Yes. 
The girl Alec will the Red Star line through when he cashed in? <laughs> I'll be switched. Miss, you and me are rivals. The Red Star line has no rivals. No? Well, maybe it didn't in the past year, but it has now, and I'm it. A two-coach stage line. Well, miss, a fellow's got to start with something. Can't all of us have rich uncles to leave us big outfits? Uh, There's one thing I can say for my stages that can't be said for yours. They keep the schedule. They ain't all the time busting down in the middle of nowhere. The very idea, I... That fellow pesting you, ladies. He, he... <laughs> Howdy, bull. Just like the stages you manage, huh? All is showing up late. You blasted whippersnapper. I've just been looking for a reason to wring your neck. I'll please, no. But, Mr. No Spar fighting, please. You're, uh, Mr. Madsen? Uh-huh, that's me. You're Miss Joan, I reckon. Yes. Abby, Mr. Madsen. Mr. Madsen, this is my companion, Miss Abby Tuttle. Ah, pleased to meet you, ma'am. How'd you do? <laughs> well, Miss, seeing as how you ain't including me in your introductions, I reckon I'll take the hint and get along. I'll be seeing you. Oh, he he's impossible. Uh, oh, well, I tell you all there's to know about that fellow, Miss. You'll figure he's worse than that. Hey, Possum, get over here and fetch these ladies' bags into the office. I'm a coming, I'm a coming. Possum, what's your name? <laughs> That's Possum Pettigrew, kind of a handyman around the station. They call him Possum because when he ain't asleep, he's pretending to be. Here, these bags here. I see them, I see them. They ain't... What in blazes ails you? Gosh, ain't she pretty. That's no way to speak in front of Miss Adams. Oh, no, ma'am. Want her a minute at all. I was meaning you. Awesome, you loco oh, idiot. Wait. Uh, <laughs> uh, seems to be a sensible looking man. <clears throat> nope, ma'am. I ain't so strong on good sense, but I sure got a real good eye for a pretty female. <laughs> Guys, you're most prettier in the sunset. Yep. Even prettier than Lem Poggle's prize steer. A steer? You hitched, ma'am. And I'm not the horse. Oh, you mistook me, ma'am. What I meant was... Pick up them bags and get out of here before I lambaste you good. Sure, Bull, sure. I'm a-going. I'm a-going just as fast as I can. <laughs> I, I'd like to have a talk with you, Mr. Madsen. Why, of course. Uh, just step into the office. Come, Abby. A steer and a horse. Never heard of something. You uh, wrote me the line was having trouble. Yeah. And Rick Leonard, the rotten line sneak, is behind it. Well, he, he was impertinent, but surely... Don't let his smooth looks fool you, miss. He's been up to more crooked stunts this past year to get our business than another fellow would think of in a whole lifetime. Really? Uh, just take them chairs there. Miss, he's cut the rates and lied his head off about us. But that ain't a patch on the rest of it. He's cut through harness so there'd be trouble with the horses on the trail. He's had fellas shoot at our drivers from cover. He's poisoned at least four of our horses. Oh, no. All gone that he has. Do you have proof? Oh, so far he's been too slick to give me the chance to catch him dead to rights. But one of these days I will. And then, miss, that fellow will get what fur. I see. Now, Miss Joan, all this is why I wanted you to come out here and have a look at things for yourself. I savvy how you feel. You'd like to think you could take over the Red Star Line and make a go of it. But I'm sorry to tell you, it ain't a job a woman can handle. Your manager, actually, you're in charge. I'd rather buy you out. But if you can't make the line pay as manager... Well, it ain't the same, miss. Sure, I'm boss, all right. But if I was owner, I could fight that skunk in my own way. If it was Letty asked for, Letty'd get. But I... But now, even if I am boss, whatever I do, you're held responsible for her. It kind of cramps my style. I'm sorry, I, I think I understand, but... But my decision remains the same. I shall not sell. Well, it's your funeral. And, well, as disagreeable as Mr. Leonard obviously is, I find it hard to think of him as an out-and-out -out crook. Miss, I still ain't told you half the things he's done. He ain't Mr. Trick. There ain't been one thing he's overlooked up to date, and that's setting fire to the stables. And I wouldn't put that past him. The stables! Fire! Come quick! Fire! Hell! hell. I told you, miss. I told you. Look, the whole end's a blaze. Get the horses out. Get water. It was a breeze, down it. I seen him. He threw the burning stick right in the hay. That's dirty. There he goes now. See him? He's riding away. After the burning breeze, horse. There's someone after him now. Oh, a madman. And look at that horse in his trap. <laughs> Speed of light, Silver, urged on by the Lone Ranger, raced in pursuit of the fleeing half-breed. The 
fugitive whipped frantically at his training mount. The animal was no match for the great white stallion that relentlessly closed the gap between them. As he neared the breed, the masked man loosened the rope at his saddle and... Rain up there! Rain up for this rope! Get up, get up! All right, then! Take it! I will show you! Oh, Silver! Oh, Silver! Silver! Take it off! Bring your bag on you! You fire that stable! No, no, Senor, I swear! I saw you throw a lighted torch into the stable. Others must have seen you also. That is not so. I won't help you. Amigo, if you will let me go. You're going to take what's coming to you, Breed. Diablo! I think these fellows riding here will give it to you. Amigo, they will hang me. Probably not. But I'd say that a man who did what you did deserved hanging. No. Oh, I'll leave you to them. Come on, Silver. Oh, Silver! Away! Make a move, Breed, and I'll blast you. Oh, oh, no, 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 no
Bull shouted at Possum. Possum, what was you standing there for doing nothing? Why didn't you draw? I got a good mind to give you your time. Bull, I wanted to throw down on that fella. Yes, sirree. I wanted to draw the worst way, but but it just seemed like I had a palsy kind of in my hand. I, I just didn't, couldn't kind of move it. Come on, the blasted Don't blame him, Bull. You did no more than he to stop his escape. Uh, that's so, Bull. I reckon you had a kind of palsy, too, huh? <laughs> Keep your fool mouth shut. Reed or Pedro, whatever you call yourself, stand up. See, si, si, senor. You ain't going to get away. What will you do with him? Can't do nothing till the sheriff gets in town. There ain't no telling when that'll be. Him and his deputies all went kiting into the hills after a killer up there. Then he can't be jailed? Yeah, not right now. But we can do the next best thing. This storeroom will do as good as a jail any time. In here, Breed. I will promise not to escape, Tommy. Save your promises. They ain't needed. You ain't getting loose whether you give them or not. Now get in there. Go. Breed! There. That takes care of him. This storeroom was built to keep crooks out, so I reckon it'll serve just as well to keep him in. And, and Leonard? He'll be caught. Don't you worry about him. I suppose that will clear things up. Well, I wish I could think so. But surely if this man is jailed and Leonard is... Miss Joan, how long will the breed be kept in jail? Will folks know he was just hired by somebody else? Why, I don't know. Maybe a few months, maybe a year, maybe hardly any time at all. Then he'll be set loose again. Yes, I... And Rick... It'll go harder with him. But I'm telling you, miss, that fellow's got pods that'll think nothing of busting him out of jail one of these days. And then when that happens, you'll see tarnation and brimstone are popping around here that you never thought could be. I see what you're getting at. Yes, sir, I still say you ought to sell. I got a little cash laid away, and if you'll make the deal, I can raise the rest, all right. And then what will you do? And then, miss, I'll forget all about the law. I'd be taking chances on my own hook. I'd go on the prod, and by the time I was through, Rick and his whole gang would be decorating Boot Hill. But you say you can't do that while working for me. Wouldn't be my duty, miss. Besides, if something happened to me, then what had happened to you? Just imagine that's something I'm not considering. But in the meantime, I still won't sell. I heard what you said, child, and if I was you, I'd say the same. Land sakes, I would... What is it? Possum. Heavens to Betsy, look at him. His eyes tight shut and his mouth wide open. And everything else around here is probably wrong, but that critter was named right. The camp the Lone Ranger had chosen was a few miles from San Felice, and a dense growth of trees some distance from the trail. It was still early afternoon, but so thick were the branches overhead that the light was dim and broken, and... Everyone in town likely believes you guilty by this time, Rick, but I'm sure you're not. I'm doggone glad to find somebody that believes in me. But what I'd like to know is how come? Tato and I have been in this district for some time. Yeah? We came here when we heard reports of the accidents continually occurring to Red Star stagecoaches. And we're sure we'd find you responsible. I give you my word, stranger. I never had one thing to do with them. We know you haven't. But what you... I said we'd expected to find you behind the trouble. You haven't known it, but you've been watched closely, you and the men you employ. None of you are guilty. I'd give a heap to be able to go back and prove that. It will be proved in time. What do you think of Bull Madsen? Do you suspect him? To tell you the truth, friend, I don't. No? What reason would he have to try and put the blame on me? We was always pretty fair friends. Up until them accidents started happening. Your arrival of the company he works for? That just goes to show... Anybody else that didn't know the facts would figure just like you're doing. But the truth of it is, Bull helped me get started in business. Them two measly coaches I got used to belong in the Red Star outfit. But when Bull figured it was about worn out, I sold them to me cheap. I put in a lot of work on them and got them in condition again. Then I set up in the stage business for myself, thinking there was enough custom to keep both outfits going. If not Bull, who would you suspect? I wouldn't even guess. Tonto. Uh you recall what we discussed together? Uh, Tonto, not forget. And carry on exactly as we agreed. Here, Silver. Tonto, do that. What are you Don't ask to... questions, Rick. Yep. I'm heading for town. And I've no time to waste in talk. Come on, Silver. Hurry, old fellow. Hurry! Well, Joan Adams, accompanied by Bull Madsen, went in search of suitable living quarters, Abby kept Possum Pettigrew company in the Red Star office. Possum, with a loaded colt in each hand, 
had been appointed to guard the door leading to the storeroom, and... Go on, Possum, tell me some more. Uh, uh, gosh, I was sleepy. Uh, I was born that way and was never able to get over it. Well, as I was saying, Abby, the second I seen you get off that stage today, it was just like something that hit me over the head. Oh. Yes, it was. I would just watch a Mike call struck dumb. Uh-huh. I've heard it said you're dumb. Well, I now. Mean, say, what was that you said? Quit interrupting yourself and get on with it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Abby, I'll take my oath on it. When I got my senses back, I says to myself, Possum Pettigrew, that's just the female that you've been waiting for all your sinful life. She's beautiful, I says to myself. Beautiful. Uh Uh-huh. Like singing. That's a nice thought. Like my singing. And and I says to myself, uh, Possum, you can tell just by looking at her, she's good. Uh Uh-huh. Just by looking. Go on. And if ever you want a wife, Possum, I says, there she is. There's a female that'd make you the prettiest, sweetest-tempered wife that a man could want. (sighs) And... You believe what I'm telling you, don't you, Abby? No. Now, look here, I... Keep it up, Possum. A woman gets my age, and she's mighty grateful to hear such nice sounding lies, even from a dried-up critter like you. Keep right on talking, Possum. Ah, what's the use? Uh, 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 <coughs> I think what's the matter. Uh, look. The key to the storeroom, Possum. The master. And you. Careful. Don't touch those guns. What are you after? Pedro. Unlock that door. Be a man, Possum. Don't you do it. I couldn't if I wanted to. Bull's got the key. Pick up that chair. Oh, what? If you can't unlock the door, you'll smash it open. Uh, see, mister, Quick. I... Uh... Tell him you won't, Possum. Go on, tell him. I... Uh... Chair. Uh, well... Hurry. I'll get fired for this. Smash in those panels. I'm taking Pedro out of there. Well, here goes... <laughs> You're that half-breed pod. No. And you, Possum, you're just a white-livered rabbit. That's what you are. And there's something you're forgetting. Men get shot, but females don't. And I'm a man and you're a female. So you can talk big, but I can't. There, she's busted open. What is this? What you doing? Come along, Pedro. I'm going to bring a crowd. And for what I'm doing, I don't want witnesses. Come. The masked man was correct. The sound made when the door was broken open reached the street and brought people hurrying from all directions. Bull Madsen and Joan Adams among them. But the Lone Ranger swung Pedro into the saddle, shouted to Silver, and raced swiftly out of town. Then he sent Silver speeding toward the broken country north of San Feliz. They did not stop until they reached an old tumble-down cabin. Then... Oh, Silver! Oh, fellow! Oh, boy! Get down. What do you do, senor? What do you have in mind? Come along. Inside with you. But, senor... And don't try shouting. We can't be heard here. I don't sell me. It is... Your work is done, Pedro. What do you say? You played your part. There's just one thing that remains to be done. What thing? Do you think you can be permitted to live to tell the truth? Uh, uh, Did you expect that after you'd implicated Rick Leonard, there would be any further need for you? Who is to tell you to do this to me? We'll mention no names. Oh, he has sent you to take my life. Oh, no, no, amigo, I have never harmed you. You cannot You implicated do it. Rick. You did so in front of witnesses. They'll testify to that. Now we can do without your testimony. I have been tricked. Your mouth isn't closed, Pedro. Perhaps someday you'll be tempted to tell who paid you to make Rick look guilty. Oh, no, no. I will be silent like the grave. The grave, yes, Pedro. I think you will be as silent as the grave. Exactly as silent. Oh, please, no. No, I will do anything. Swear to whatever you wish. I, I will promise that... Look out the window. Uh, you see those horsemen? Two of them, Pedro. See. One's an Indian. And the other? The other is bull. Exactly. You'll be wondering why I haven't already closed your mouth. He he has betrayed me. What did you expect, the kind of game you've been playing? They will be here. Then perhaps it'll be better if Bull finishes you. (laughs) Cheap pig! You have me fire the stable. You pay me to say this Senor Leno who who hired me. But now you kill Pedro. You have the mouth man keep Pedro from speaking. Oh, fool, don't talk. Don't say anything. And you will keep me from talking with the bull, eh? Sacre, the mouth man have me covered. But I have the knife... (laughs) 
Oh, oh, you have broke my wrist. You won't hurt. Blast you, stranger. Why did you hold the breeze? Why did you send the engine to bring me here? I'll show you. you that door you see leads into the other half of this cabin. You mean that... I think you've heard enough. More than enough. You fool, it was you all the time. You got the breed, mister. But you won't get me. Get him, Tonto. He did him. Hold him. He's holding him. Now get up. Get I'm taking your guns. Let me loose. Just let me loose. You'll do all right as you are. Boy, I ain't never liked you since the first day I went to work for you. And it does me good to see the masked fella get the best of me. I'll fix you. You stand still. You, you hold up. still. I can't tie you. You got me now. But I'll get even. I'll get even with every last one of you. But you'll have to wait a good many years in jail, Bull, before you get the chance. But how did you know, stranger? What made you think he was guilty? I explained it to Rick before. I came here to investigate. It didn't take long to find out Rick was innocent. Everything pointed to Bull, but I had to wait for a chance to prove it on him. But the breed, he accused Rick. It was part of Bull's plan. If Pedro was caught, he was to swear that Rick had hired him to burn the stables. Perhaps Bull even planned that Pedro would be caught, expecting to free him after Pedro's testimony had put the blame on Rick. I was just as sure as sure could be that Bull had nothing to do with it. Bull was clever. He learned you wanted to go into business for yourself. He made it easy for you by selling you two stagecoaches cheap. As a rival of the Red Star Line, you would naturally be suspected if accidents began to happen to your competition. A dirty schemer. Then, then Bull did all that trying to force me to sell. I suppose he figured you being a woman, it wouldn't be hard to make you give up. I, I'm sorry for accusing you. Oh, shucks, forget it. Uh, the masked man told me a scheme that might work out, if he was willing. Yes. Well, uh... Well, after all, there ain't a whole lot of use for two stage lines. We could go partners in a way. Just run the two lines like one. That's a swell idea, miss. And Rick could manage them. I think that would be fine. And, uh, and maybe, well, maybe one of these days we could go partners the whole way. Hmm? Perhaps. My golly, that reminds me. Abby's waiting in town. And I never did get around to asking if she'd gotten to getting hitched to me. Come on, round these fellers up, then let's get going. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.